So is there something that Hollywood doesn't get about America? Joining me now, 2017 People's Choice Award nominee, Tim Allen. Yes, there we go, yes. Who stars in ABC's, thank you, Jess, yeah. better late than never. It stars in ABC's Last Man Standing, which airs on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern. This is your chance. Show him the, show him the jacket. Uh, oh, Look ow. at this promo, ABC. Whatever you're paying him, it's not enough. That's it. Ow, I can't. ABC, 8 p.m. There we go. Got it. That's what it's all about. I got to go. So, so, Gigi Hadid right. mocking our next first lady. Appropriate or not? I don't think it's appropriate in that venue. But again, this is a, it's a, I, I'm not a spokesman for Hollywood. I'm, I'm a comedian. <laughs> right. So I, I, I get to tour around the country and I do comedy and I do a show that leans. We have a point of view. I think your character is a conservative. Well, a point of view, but it's written by liberals. We have a liberal staff. We have conservatives. That's close to that saying. That's that's redundant. But they're, they, we have a sense of humor about ourselves, and there's a point of view, and there's a. a place to do it. What I think is what I find odd in Hollywood is that they didn't like Trump because he was a bully. But if you side, if you had any kind of inkling that you were for Trump, you got bullied for doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's where this, it, it gets a little um, hypocritical to me, is that you, you can now bully people. And you're always on the defense with this. But mostly what I'm finding is there's no source material. For, for comedians, like if I want to find a joke on the show, we, we go up river to find the, the joke, and there's no, like, they, this, he was against homosexuals somehow. And I said, where did you, whoever, Donald Trump? Yeah, whoever said that? And he didn't he wave the flag at the, con, the convention, yeah, the LBGT mm -hmm. flag? Mm -hmm. And I said, that was an unusual. They've got to beef with Mike Pence on that, but Donald Trump, but, no. But, that, but a close association to him, I don't see it. And so he said, well, I can't make a joke about it. I feel like we're playing that game I played when I was a kid at telephone. Did you ever play that in yeah, high school? Yeah, of course. Where you say something at the beginning. And that's what's happening. It's only funny to me because I'm a comedian. I can do this. But it's very difficult in Hollywood to find anybody, any source material that how, would. Well, how are you surviving there as somebody who's, you know, you know, on TV as a conservative? Well, I might not after tonight. Outed himself as open to Donald Trump's ideas because there are a lot of actors I know many of them who are part of the Hollywood conservative underground and they do not reveal that well, they lean right at all I like I'm really an anarchist that's how, that's how I look at it. As comedians, I don't like anybody tell me what to do period. I know, but people still object to that if they, if they find out you support Trump at all it's like you you smell bad, especially I, in Hollywood. Believe me, I've had these. They're not even discussions. You get bullied into a position. I don't want to defend the guy. I can't. He said stupid stuff. He, to me, sometimes he, he acts like a new talent comedian. If you've ever been to a new talent show at a comedy, there's guys that have great material that have very, very bad comedy timing. And he's got <laughs> terrible timing. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, he'll see, he says stuff that could be. George Lopez, and I hate to doubt George, he said a joke about, he was against the wall. Years ago on stage, it was real funny about, we, we got to build a wall. And I, uh, forgive me, George, I, I, but the Mexicans will have to build it. And that was the joke. Donald says it, or uh, expectant president? But president elect Trump. President elect, expectant president. <laughs> I guess that would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? If he actually was expecting. Expectant. That, well, who knows? But he, sometimes he doesn't say things. I, I give him the benefit of the doubt. A lot yeah. of comedians, we watch it go, God, if you just gapped that a little bit, it might have been funny. And he may, in fact, be a guy that wants to be funnier than he is. That doesn't matter. I look at a larger view. I don't like people telling me what to do. If you think this government works good the size it is, I'm one of these guys, just make it smaller. Mm -hmm. who, who on that DS wanted to make it smaller? I'm not so sure that he does because he has, a, well, he has a long line of being a Democrat, but at least it was a shot at making things smaller. I, I don't know, physical realist or fiscal realist, rather. What about all the infrastructure spending he wants to do and he doesn't want to cut entitlements other than Obama? I don't know. Then you get these little, these little red flags go up. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure, I'm not sure what, what exactly has happened. Certainly for a Democrat, you should be happy about this. He's not that. Some of those spending... They could have wound up with Ted Cruz. They, <laughs> Don't start that. When I mean, you're talking about social issues, I mean, they would have liked him a lot less. Somebody than said Trump. one comic. It looked like he had a milk allergy. The way he talked, he had some. There was. <laughs> he's got to take some antibiotics or something. Didn't he? Didn't he seem like he had some kind of? God, like, like, do one of these things. It, <laughs> Poor Ted. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. Tim Allen, and uh, the show is actually very popular. Last Man Standing, up for People's Choice Awards. You've got our vote. Yeah, Thanks. there we go. Oh, wait, wait, let me give Better you late than never. Can I give you a joke? Yeah, great. Th this is what I said. That, that they're making L L.A.'s come up with safe space for people that voted for Trump. They, they're in that area. They want a safe space. They're calling it Texas. <laughs> Thank you. I like it. Somebody got it. Tim Allen, everybody. Thank you, sir.
Joining us now with more, Kellyanne Conway, Senior Advisor to the Presidential Transition Team. Kellyanne, great to see you. Thank you, Megan. So what does that mean, fairness, right? Because I, I'll venture a guess, as we saw a lot of those executives going in, for the viewers, we saw a bunch of Fox News executives going in there. We saw Jeff Zucker, President of CNN, standing there, There's, just in case you don't know those faces. Uh, so there was all the muckety-mucks from all of the media, cable, broadcast, you name it. What is fairness to, to Trump, to President-elect Trump? Fairness is actually not having presumptive negativity written about you and always assuming the worst about you. And I think that Donald Trump has faced an unprecedented avalanche of critical coverage when he was running. And frankly, I think it in part he owes his victory to that. There was a backlash against the elites, a backlash against those who were telling Americans what is important to them. This statement, this transgression, this issue, whereas if you look at the Fox News polls, CNN, ABC, NBC, everybody was there, CBS polls, you see that Americans were very focused on jobs in the economy, health care, immigration, terrorism. I mean, the cues and clues of this election were right in front of Let us. Let me the ask whole time. you that. So that's so, and by the way, the one that sticks out in my mind and has all along was the New York Times piece on Melania Trump. Melania yes. Trump, the spouse, the yes. spouse, right? She's not a candidate, calling her a mannequin and a trophy wife, which if anybody had ever said that about any, uh, Michelle Obama was a successful lawyer, but Melania Trump has been a successful businesswoman, she speaks several languages, a mannequin and a trophy wife, and, and it was just fine, that they're allowed to say that about her. It's as if the editors had off that week, and <laughs> so that's just so a respect example. goes both ways, right? It does. But let me ask you about that, because even though the media did that to him, right, in his view, and obviously it's, it's true in, in many cases that they went after him with abandon. The public did see through it. So, has he learned anything from that? You know, can, well, can we expect him to have a thicker skin as president, given that he he made it, notwithstanding that kind of coverage? Well, he does have a thick skin, frankly. Somebody works very closely with him and was in that room today, d directly beside him. I, I will say this though: that's not what the meeting was about. The meeting is not about settling scores and avenging grievances and bringing up you know, different types of coverage. I think it's saying really that Donald Trump was the one person in that room who got it right, who understood American and American reflected back to them what their aspirations and their fears and their frustrations were. And now everybody has to work together. They're the fourth estate, they're incredibly powerful. Anchors like you are incredibly powerful in terms of distilling the information and reporting the news and maybe some opinion to the public, Megan, in a fair-handed and complete way. Mm -hmm. And he will be the president of the United States. So we, we can have Mutual. He knows he's going to get hit, though. He's the president. That's I mean, fine. he's going to get hit. He's going to get hit often. He's not going to like it. That's the way it works, you know? That is the way it works, but it should be relevant to the job, and it should be relevant to the voters. And I have to tell you, as someone who was like a chief spokeswoman for him and his campaign manager, it wasn't always relevant to what Americans out there were telling us at rallies or telling pollsters behind the scenes concerned them. But I actually, having sat there, I thought it was very cordial, very genial. I thought it was So if we cover him the same way, let's say the Kelly file, if we cover him the same way we cover Barack Obama, the same amount, the same skeptical eye, he's going to be fine with that. Yes, but can you say that about everyone that's going to cover him? I mean, you had journalists saying during the campaign, Megan, that Donald Trump compels them to suspend all objective standards of journalism. Yes, correct. They wrote about it. This, we had some of those journalists on this program and press I'm them sure you did. And they, on they the felt, inappropriateness of that. That's right. It's completely inappropriate. It's not journalism. It's opinion. That's right. And it's sort of stop him at all costs. That's right. If you want to take off your journalist outfit and declare yourself a pundit and go argue against him, Go for it, but you can't wear both hats. Right, and even the coverage over the last two weeks since he did win the election, it's been a combination of a few people wanting to cover his next 100 days, you know, what he wants to do in office. He's been very clear about that 100-day plan. Is Your viewers can go pull it up on our website right now, his 100-day plan for them to see. But then you have others still fighting the last war. You have other people on TV, a lot of pundits on TV, frankly, everywhere, really just trying to deny him and delegitimize him. Well, you know, the five afraid, stages of grief accepting. ends with acceptance, That's so they'll right. get there eventually. All right, I want a couple of other it, things I, I have to ask you about. What was this big soundbite, though, so, at the time? It was, will Donald Trump and his supporters accept the election results? It, he won, and, and so many right. other people are saying hashtag I want to move on from the media. Secretary of State, now they're saying that it's between Mitt Romney and Rudy Giuliani, which has a lot of our viewers saying, how could Mitt Romney even be in the running, given how loyal Rudy Giuliani was to Mr. Trump? And even if you may like Mitt Romney, he was not loyal, and in fact, he savaged Trump during the primary. But the question is, are you loyal to the agenda that Mr. Trump, that President-elect Trump has put forward in terms of his view of the world? 
uh, and the prison through which the Secretary of State would function. But I think there's a longer short list for that particular position and others. They're not, very it's not highly, just those two. Highly, no, not highly qualified men and women who have come to Bedminster, come to Trump Tower, the, uh, people of different races and ethnicities, all political persuasions, people who have different backgrounds, public sector, private sector, most of them will not be in the cabinet. Most of them are coming because they love the country and they want to share what their work on a particular issue or a particular success story has been. Well, I spoke well of both men that, that the meeting yeah. took place. What about you, Kellyanne? Are, oh, have you been offered a, a cabinet topic. post? No, it's not. You've been one of his most loyal advisors, his most successful, certainly the highest profile woman associated with his campaign. Has he offered you a position? He has offered me a position very early on. In fact, the election night or the wee hours of Wednesday he did. And is it a senior position? It, it is. And I am very fl I'm humbled by that. I think that it's everybody's dream to serve their nation at the highest level if they can. But I have four small children and I need to balance all types of personal and professional considerations. But I, I'm deciding where I'm best for this president-elect and this vice president-elect in, in due course. But there are many qualified men and women who can serve him at the highest levels. I, I do want to say, though, uh, in terms of the people who were coming to see him, how thrilling it was to turn the corner and see people from entertainment, from the private sector, people of different races and, ethnic and ethnicities. The highest ranking woman in the Congress, Kathy McMorris Rogers, mm -hmm. who's given birth three times while well, she's been in Congress. That's pretty impressive. We had Representative Tulsi Gabbard from Hawaii there today, who's a Democrat. Democrat. How about Sarah Palin? Donald Trump had suggested she would be in his cabinet if he won. Is she going to be in? I haven't seen her. I know that they're close and that she's been a great loyal friend and advisor to him throughout the campaign. But I haven't uh, seen her as part of the cabinet mix. But that doesn't mean that she's not. Look, we're going to take the counsel of many different people, whether you have an official position or not. Your opinion, your advice, this guy is a world-class listener and learner, mm -hmm. and he's somebody I've seen behind the desk as a businessman, as a presidential candidate, and now president-elect. I see the same process where he assesses different consequences and possibilities, and he, you know he's in command and control, but he really does okay. take counsel from many different people. A question for you about Steve Bannon, senior advisor to Mr. Trump, who's from Breitbart uh, originally. He, he's quoted as, as lamenting the fact that he predicts a Fox News that will be more centrist in the future and came after our boss Rupert Murdoch in some unflattering terms. I, I question whether does he have a problem with with a centrist news organization with centrist news anchors. I mean why would he object to that? I think his objection would be to bias and unfair uh, which is not the way he characterized Fox News to me anyway. But we're all looking for objective coverage and the idea that some people think they're being objective in the mainstream media when they clearly have not been, when they allow people to refer to President-elect Trump in ways that are uh, legally charged, that if you actually said that about him mm -hmm. in, in a court of law, it would be a, you wouldn't be able to. No, he has to be respected. He has he, to be respected. He's earned the respect he, of all He of has. Us. Thank you. And, you know, Steve Bannon is a brilliant tactician. He was, I call him, the general of our campaign. It's true. And he he had a, needs to be a unifier, he doesn't a, he? He had a receiving line today when the mainstream media but went through the he leaving. too needs to be a unifier, doesn't he, as the senior advisor? But he is. I mean, Megan, we unified. We looked past and were impervious to the constant criticism and naysayers. Do you know what was said about all of us? We're stupid. You'll never work in this town again. How do you look your four children in the eye? You sold your soul. Yeah. You know, it went I know, on I've and on I've seen that happen on. to you directly. It went on and on and on. And when you're focused on the task at hand and you believe in the man who's running for president and the man who's running for vice president, it steals you in a right, way. Right, but then to the victor go the spoils. You rise up by lifting you know, That's right. each other up. You win. And so isn't this the time to be magnanimous like Donald Trump is and not to be, you know, predicting or projecting onto the press how they must cover him. They're going to cover him how they see it, you know, how they see fit. We just want it to be objective Consistent and fair. Consistent with what they've learned we want it to an be ethical a standard. Yes, and Megan, we want it to be a post-election coverage of the president-elect. That's the point here. The campaign is over. The people have spoken. And this man busted through a blue wall that nobody expected. He won states like Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania, which should have been Hillary Clinton's the whole time. Mm -hmm. And they were his because of the message, because of the way he's a master communicator yep. and, a, and a master connector. And but we don't brilliant. get paid to cheerlead for him. No, we, we get paid to cover him. I don't expect anybody here to cheerlead for him. I expect yeah. us to have platforms like this where we can fairly and effectively and respectfully come in and state the case on his behalf. Amen. Thank you. Agreed. Thanks for having me. Great to see you.